All right, we have placed our creature. We have put stuff in front of their feet with internal compositing. So they are integrated into the, the scene. We have adjusted them in terms of their lighting, their levels, their color balance, their hue saturation. We are playing with putting uh, them into the atmosphere. And then we are racing away from some of that atmosphere to reveal them. So if we took our creature away now, it's going to be a little weird because there's like a hole in the atmosphere where the creature was, right? That's because the creature is closer to us. Now we can actually use dodge and burn. So we did direct adjustments first to affect the whole of the creature. Now we can use dodge and burn. But instead of doing it on our creature layer, because my worry always about dodge and burn is they're so strong that you use them and we often overdo it, and then we can't get it back. We do all these burn steps, and it really changes it, and we lose a lot. So there is a great method for this. And to do it, what you do is you duplicate your creature layer, Command-J. Then you select the empty space around your creature. Remember, this is a clean PNG cutout, so selecting the empty space around it should be pretty, pretty easy. You can even have contiguous unchecked in case there's any kind of what are called undercuts in your creature. Now you're going to say select the inverse. So that is the way to get an exact kind of cookie cutter shape of your creature on this layer. And then we are going to say edit fill it with 50% gray. So we basically just made a gray silhouette. I'll turn off the, the layers in between, right? And then what I can do is take everything that's behind my creature and just put it all into a folder together so you can see very clearly what I'm doing. So I have the background in that group. I have my creature layer that I've already adjusted. Now I have a new layer that's a duplicate, matches the creature exactly, but is filled with 50% gray. Okay, now on this 50% gray layer, which is on top of my creature, I'm gonna name this, just so you can be clear, my non-destructive editing <laughs> layer for the creature. So how does this work? Well, if I dodge and burn the gray, what happens? Obviously, if I burn it, the gray will get darker. And if I dodge it, the gray will get lighter. Pretty easy to understand, right? If I change the blending mode on the gray from normal to overlay, so this is what's called a non-destructive overlay layer, what you'll see is where I burned it, it darkens, and where I dodge it, it brightens. So let's go back. Before I dodged and burned the gray. And let's start by making this just flat gray in the layer blending mode of an overlay layer. And now it's like that gray layer isn't even there. But if I lock just so I don't accidentally dodge and burn on my actual creature layer, and I burn and dodge on this non-destructive layer. Let's see, if light's coming from behind, it's gonna be darker. So I'm gonna use burn here, here at the core of the creature, it's gonna be darker. It's not gonna be a lot of reflected light hitting it. It's not transparent. What it's doing, if I set it on normal mode, is I'm burning the gray, but by having it set to overlay mode, overlay only lets things change off of middle gray, right? If it's darker than middle gray, then it will, will, it will darken the pixels behind it. If it's lighter than middle gray, it will lighten the pixels behind it. So it's a way of 
not hurting your original, but dodging and burning your original. Also, if you try to just dodge and burn your creature like on the whole thing, you would also be dodging and burning the landscape. So it separates your creature from the landscape. So now I'm going to dodge and I'm going to brighten it, you know, where the light's hitting it on its back. But I'm not brightening the creature, even though it looks like I am. I'm brightening that non-destructive overlay layer. So getting its back, getting the back of its legs. I might need to zoom in. Shrink my brush a little bit. Remember, I always use dodge and burn less than 30%. Sometimes less than that. And I always just do it on the mid-tones. Because feathers are translucent, I can dodge it a little bit all around the edges. Because the light can kind of come through these feathers. Just in the midtones. And by doing it on a middle gray non-destructive layer, it also limits like how strong you can actually do this. It's not going to go to solid white or solid black. So if I turn this to normal, what am I actually doing? I'm doing this kind of thing with my dodge. With the back of the head, the top of the head, get the wing. But this is on a non-descriptive overlay layer, which means it needs to be an overlay mode. So this is it with it, this is it without it. Right? That matches the scene more, but it's a little overdone because I always overdo dodging and burning. It's human nature. The beautiful thing about having it on its own layer is then I can just take the opacity down and decide how much of that dodging and burning I want. I can even just erase away from it if I need to. So I'd say that's about the right amount. And is that better than this? Yes, it matches the lighting angle now. Now, how do we make the environment match the lighting angle? Because the creature casts a shadow. Mine is really tough because this environment, this ground does not like show a cast shadow very well. Not like a beech wood or not like a rock, a flat rock surface. But we can use the same kind of non-destructive editing to dodge and burn the background. So now, on top of everything, even on top of my texture overlays, I'm going to make a new layer and I'm going to fill that completely with middle gray. Then I'm going to turn that blending mode to overlay. And now I'm going to use dodge and burn to affect the whole thing. One easy way to make a cast shadow is to use your lasso. Just make kind of a vague shape where you think the shadow of your creature might be. And then on your non-destructive overlay layer, right? If it's on normal mode, looks like this. You just go to image adjustments, levels, and you shift the midtones darker. Okay, what does that look like when you overlay? It darkens everything underneath the creature. The problem is that all has sharp edges. You'll see all those sharp edges. But that's a shadow of my creature. If I need more, like the shadow of the wings, this is again on the non-destructive overlay layer, I can like extend it out and do it again. So image adjustment, levels, push the mid-tone a little bit darker. Now I can select all of that gray very easily just by using the magic wand because remember all this layer is is just this <laughs> and then I can fill that with whatever color I want so if I'm really going in for color theory I'm gonna say fill it with a color and I have to think what is the uh, the lighting color my lighting is a Sun that's pretty yellow. So what is the complementary color of yellow? Purple, right? So I can go not just with gray, I can go like a purplish gray. That's a little bit darker than 50%. And then fill it with that. 
right? And then let's see what that does when I change it to an overlay. I can dodge and burn it. I can also just soften it by erasing away from it because that's what I'm going to do first. So I'm going to use my soft eraser at a pretty high opacity, maybe even 100% opacity, and just erase away from where I don't think it's necessary, especially at these edges. But it is going to deepen and make a little bit purple all the shadows in this area. <laughs> which is very subtle and then I can always blend it in you know with opacity and decide how much I want it but it makes a big difference this is what it was like before this is what it was like after and some of the things that are in the foreground overlapping it I can erase out so that they they pop a little bit still but maybe I don't want them to pop that much Then I can also sync that shadow underneath the atmosphere. Maybe halfway. Yeah, that helps. So I used to have students actually submit not just their creature scape, but I also used to have them um, submit what looked like, so you'll see this in some of the past examples, a layer like this, just as a JPEG, so you can see the non-destructive layer and what's been done to it, what's been erased away, what's been dodged and burned. As we take my creature away and we turn this to normal as well, it's interesting. Oh, it's because I have this turned on. Sorry. So you can see kind of my creature that's dodged and burned. Yeah, it's all it's all there. So let's turn them back to overlay and, and reveal our creature scape. Big difference from having the creature there originally. So now the creature is there. We have tried to make its anatomy match, the angle of its anatomy match the environment. And we've tried to make the lighting and the angle of the lighting and the color of the lighting and the cast shadows all match the environment. Remember that shadows soften as they pull away from their source. Then let's see. The last little thing I can sometimes do is I'll duplicate my creature move it up to the very top and then I'll just decide if I overdid it a little bit because remember this is this is what's called a hero shot or a hero plate in special effects or in concept art this is where we're really introducing a creature design so even though this might be the most believable for it being in its environment we also want to really showcase it so sometimes I'll bring back a little bit of that, that sharpness for my original assignment after it's already been adjusted. So I'll just go about 20% of that. And then I think that's pretty good for this creature scape. So I'm going to save my work, Command S. And now I'm going to save it as a copy as a JPEG of Proving Ground number one. Remember, always save with your name and some description. But leave it open because we need now the image size of this image. So then go to image, image size, so you know exactly what its inches dimension is, its physical dimension, and what its resolution is. And I don't want you to say 350. I want you to uncheck resample and see what your image would be at 300 pixels per inch. Because that's standard minimum print resolution. And then we have that up. We can go.